Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, December 9th, 2019, and today we're actually going to be revisiting my first ever 2020 election prediction. Now, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to avoid making an actual election prediction for this one, um, just because I have made that content pretty recently, and uh, though I do tend to post them every month, I have had a number of things pile up on me um, in my life, obviously, outside of my channel, so I haven't really been uh, producing daily um, mainly, I guess, weekly content, and again, I do apologize for that. Um, I really hope things settle down. Uh, I'm taking the ACT this Saturday. I just recently took the SAT um, this uh, previous Saturday. Um, so I guess, yeah, and midterms start Thursday and, and next week, Wednesday. So um, I guess I'm pretty booked, uh, uh, but I'll definitely try to be getting out a video. I aim to get out an election night today, but um, there are a couple of things I still need to work around with that one. Um, but hopefully by the end of Christmas, um, I guess, or end of New Year's, I'll have out a full election, including the House and Governor elections. But why revisit my first ever election prediction? Now, I already mentioned that um, I don't want to make a new prediction for right now until later into December. Um, and I'll probably discuss Warren's uh, full one year running for president, um, I guess, anniversary. But um just taking a look at where my channel has pretty much progressed um this is way early on so yes i did like my own video um uh, back then i think i started out um three subscribers i think i had this channel from something um which i think this is pretty interesting uh back then um you know i tried to read every comment um but some of these are brand new so i wouldn't exactly say um i guess actually yeah so i guess i did read every comment that was there um two years ago but um i tried i try not to heart uh partisan comments because i feel like that's um one way or another but if it's something funny then i typically do um but i just was looking through and this video is 20 minutes long like that's absolutely insane i don't know how i was rambling guys when you're behind this microphone and you're just talking essentially to yourself it's the equivalent of I guess maybe like a lecturer or something because it's really hard to keep up this whole pace with yourself and uh, there's no back and forth conversation so it's something I definitely adapted to condensing over time um, but you can pretty much see my progression through oh geez that was my old microphone I'll turn the audio off but you can see the progression through the video about how I tried to I pretty much do it the same way I tried to fill out all the uh, safe states then go ahead and hit the swing states um, and again, the American electorate typically doesn't change. Uh, so what stood true in 2017 likely stood true now, other than house composition and things like that, uh, so likely holds true now. Um, but it's really interesting seeing a lot of these swing states actually uh, going back to being swing states or were previously swing states. It's not just a 2018 trend thing. Um, this was a very real reality back then as well. Um, so this is at the point where I'm about to decide the... Uh, I guess, balance of the presidency or whoever wins the White House, whatever, um, with Senator Elizabeth Warren at 219, President Donald Trump at 215. If you take a look at some of my characterizations already, um, I already have Arizona, Ohio, Iowa, and North Carolina. Now, if this was a current prediction right now, I probably would have New Hampshire filled in right now uh, based off of her regional advantage. I'd probably have Michigan filled in. I'd definitely have Colorado filled in. I'd have North Carolina up. I would have uh, Arizona also up for grabs as well. Uh, but other than that, I pretty much agree with this map. I would definitely shade in Georgia before I would Arizona. Um, but again, I would still keep it as a toss up for right now just to discuss it a little bit more. Um, but Arizona, actually, I think this one might be um, a little bit more in favor of the Democrats than it was back then. I still think it will be a Donald Trump victory if Senator Elizabeth Warren is the nominee. Uh, just based off a proven track record that centrist Democrats typically do a little bit better in Arizona, especially with the 2018 Senate elections where they actually had a Democrat win. And we have one coming up in 2020 that the Democrat might actually win uh, against uh, Martha McSally yet again. Um, but that's besides the point. Uh, taking a look at some of these other states, again, like I said, the American electorate typically doesn't change, so swing states that were there two years ago are still swing states. Again, this channel was created after the 2016 election. This also shows that I did not make a 2016 election prediction, so I've seen a lot of comments about me uh, talking about how I was so wrong in 2016, and I took that video down. I didn't have a channel in 2016, but um, 
You do you. Uh, but taking a look at this uh, map, I definitely agree with this Rust Belt characterization of it being swing states. Uh, other than Michigan, I probably would have already put in the Democratic column. But again, they're still going to be close. It's not going to be a blowout for uh, either candidate unless something drastic happens uh, in favor of the Democrats or in favor of the GOP. But, you know, let's go on and see where it progresses uh, from here. So. Oh, I want to keep going. Uh, you can see I characterized Georgia. I'm probably discussing the Rust Belt. I just characterized Michigan. So again, uh, typically these trends stay the same over time. Uh, and it's not that I'm just trying to keep with the same map. It's just really hard to see a variation in the American electorate, mainly because it doesn't happen. Uh, if you take a look at uh, to the 2016 map, there's only so many states you could actually flip in favor of either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And... Those are the only states that are going to be considered toss-ups in 2020, uh, to be completely honest. If you take a look at uh, the margins from 2018 as well, there aren't exactly uh, that many states that went for either uh, political party that have suddenly shifted one way or another. Again, Nebraska is always going to be Republican for the immediate future, and Illinois is always going to be Democrat uh, for a presidential election. I thought that was my mouse. I was like, what is happening? Um, but... Uh, again, not much variation, and that's not my fault. I apologize if that's not something you like, um, but it's just something that is uh, a true reality. Now, I know how this video ends. I actually uh, started off recording this video with the uh, end up on the screen, then I ended the video and restarted it because I did not want you guys to see. A lot of you guys are going to skip to the end anyway, so might as well go there, right? But as you can see, I've characterized Iowa. Um, I filled in all the swing states except for Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and North not north, New Hampshire. It is up north, so I guess maybe so. Uh, but New Hampshire, I characterized for Warren. But um, I actually, oh, there's my old logo. <laughs> That's so uh, cute, I guess. Um, but uh, that was before I knew how to get rid of this. Um, but over here, if you take a look, um, I have Maine's second district characterized for Donald Trump. Now, why might I do that? Why might I predict that? I still see Donald Trump holding a strong ground in Maine's 2nd Congressional District. There are definitely candidates that I do see uh, having a better uh, chance at taking it back. Hillary Clinton really was not the right one for that election, number one, and number two for these states. Like, if you take a look at Nebraska's 2nd District, Bernie Sanders would have placed, um, uh, I mean, done a lot better than Hillary Clinton if he was in that situation. Um, but... Uh, same thing in Maine's second district. Uh, but again, Elizabeth Warren definitely has that regional advantage uh, that she's going to use. She's going to play on it. She's going to, uh, uh, I guess, be one of them in the election uh, campaign. But that one uh, congressional district does not make too much of an impact on the actual election. I do think that whoever wins in 2020 will be by a larger margin than uh, Trump's victory in 2016. But it could be for him and it could be for the Democrats. You never know. I mean, unless I can tell the future, um, but I cannot. Uh, but let's take a look. So it all came down to Pennsylvania in this map. I gave Wisconsin to um, Elizabeth Warren. You know, actually, now that I think about it, this is something that I've been debating with for uh, a pretty long time on my channel, Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. Both of these states I do see have possibilities of going to the GOP, but I'd likely give Wisconsin before I would give Pennsylvania. Keep in mind, this is my first ever election prediction. Ever. I never made videos about this before. Um, actually, I think I did. Uh, yeah, I did make videos for it, but I got like four views and this was, uh, let me think, April, but it wasn't my channel. This is a uh, like news channel me and my friends made um, that lasted about a month and I think all those videos are gone. I really want to find them. They're probably, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. They're on um, my old MacBook probably. Um, actually, I might get one of those and upload them because they are so bad. Um, very bad. But just taking a look at this electoral map, not much really has changed, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't want to say that's a bad thing, um, mainly because, again, a lot of my videos were based off of previous data, and we I only had 2016 to compare to this. I did not have the, even the 2017 Virginia elections, and I was so sure about Virginia being a blue state, and even more sure now. <laughs> Um, Colorado I was a little bit debating on. I'm much more sure about it being a Democratic state now. But um, I do think that uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, number one, is a top candidate, which is why I chose her. And I didn't choose like my Michelle Obama or Oprah Winfrey prediction, even though those were one of my earlier videos. 
Uh, I do think that this um, electoral map is interesting to look at because it shows you how little uh, we've seen change in this electoral map. I personally do not see a blowout for the Democrats. I don't see a blowout for Donald Trump, maybe peaking 320 electoral votes, which you could argue is a blowout in the current climate. But again, um, you know, a blowout I would say is 2008 Barack Obama. Um, on the verge with 2012 Barack Obama. I wouldn't quite say it's a blowout at that point. But um, taking a look at this electoral map, I really find it interesting. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was definitely a top name back then as well. Really shows you the whole history behind it. This was more than two years ago. Um, so uh, maybe I'll make a revised, uh, I guess, look back on my channel with my three-year... Um, with my three-year anniversary not coming up super soon obviously um but i guess it would be june somewhere uh, early june i think june 11th um 2017 so yeah that pretty much wraps up this video um i'm gonna go ahead and try to get uh an election night out this week um hopefully i can um we'll see though uh but yeah so thank you guys for watching this video comment down suggestions below and i will see you all tomorrow